Belek finds himself in the first episode of season three in exactly where he left off the last episodes of season two, which is in his tidy whities having had the, uh, what do you call it, the stuffing beat out of him, and he's practically naked in his tidy whities the lowest man on the totem pole in this new prison called Sona, which is in Panama. The great thing about season three of Prison Break is we have a brand new character called Sona Prison in Panama. And Sona Prison is the worst of all possible prisons you could ever be in. There was a riot there, uh, I think three or four years before you see us in, in the prison, where the prisoners took over the prison. And the guards pulled back to the perimeter and have pointed their guns at the prisoners. If the prisoners want to try to escape, they just shoot them down, no questions asked, with machine guns and AK-47s. They're gone. So the prisoners actually run the prison. And inside the prison, there's the head dude, it was, is, is named Lechero, played by Robert Wisdom, so you'll meet him. He's kind of like the Pope of Sona Prison, except that he's a prisoner, and he is as corrupt and dastardly as any prisoner that you'd ever want to meet. Now, you got also in the prison, you got the great character Teabag, and of course, Michael's in there trying to get out. You got Mahone, who's uh, jonesing for his drugs in the prison. You got Bellick, who, of course, I'm in my tidy whities and, uh, and just trying to get some, some food and water. Uh, and you also have people on the outside of the prison trying to get Michael out. So it's, it's a great, it's a great character. Like Fox River was a great character in the first season. Now we got this great character of Sona Prison in the third season. Well, the great thing we have, this character of Sona and everything that goes with it, all the cells you see here, um, you'll see the courtyard of Sona where the, the, the fights over the chicken feet happen. You'll see the sewers with all the water in them. The set uh, designer and the, the, what they call the set dressing, the art department, have made these sets look so realistic that we don't have to act. It's like we were in Fox River when we were in Joliet, Illinois at the penitentiary there. It was a real penitentiary. This feels like a real prison. So the great thing is you don't have to act. Like I have to go down into the sewer and there's six inches of water in it and it's all dirty and muddy and you feel like you're, you really feel like you're there. Um, and these, this gorgeous set they've built, which it, it's just uh, fantastic what they've done, um, to make it feel like a Panamanian prison. It has a life of its own. So when you get on a set like this, uh, with people in, in costume and a great script and um, wonderful actors, and you just have to go for it. It's just, it, it all works together and you're there. It's been a great kind of um, arc for an actor to play because in Fox River I had the whole prison as my kind of domain. I was in charge of the prison. I even think Bellick thought he was in charge of the prison more than the Pope was. So he was the top dog there in the prison. And now in season three, I ended up being the lowest in the prison. So it's been a great kind of role reversal, uh, 180 degrees. There's a certain kind of maybe uh, camaraderie simply because we know each other from before. But there's never been any kind of good blood at all between like Bellick and Michael or Bellick and Teabag. Um, so I think only out of necessity do they kind of band together. But it's, it's all, um, there, there's no good blood between them. It's all, it's all bad blood. So nobody trusts anybody. And we all know Michael might be trying to escape because that's what he did in Fox River. At least that's what we're hoping. And we're hoping maybe we can get on board with that. Well, Bellick, he may be beaten down, but he ain't dead yet. And I think uh, he is, as long as he's still got some life in him, he's going to be, uh, you know, mouthing off and uh, and getting in trouble for that. And I think that he's got a lot of good one-liners, and uh, he ends up in the worst of all possible places. And I think one of the things that people like to see Bellick happen, uh, like to see happen to Bellick, is he kind of gets his comeuppance. You know, he, you know. He does these bad things, but then in the end, you know, justice always serves him bad. 